Stray cats often prowl around the yards on the railway, looking for food or milk. Workmen sometimes have to shoo them away from the milk tankers when one is left open by accident. There was a black cat who had wandered into one of the stations on Edward's branch line. The station master adopted him and named him Bernard. He would spend his time watching the trains go by and chasing away mice. Visitors always enjoyed seeing him too. Thomas had been sent to help out on the branch while Edward was at the works. The fat controller had kindly allowed him to bring Annie and Clarabelle along so he wouldn't feel lonely. One morning, as they pulled in, they spotted the black cat purring contentedly on the platform. Oh my, isn't he sweet, twitted Annie. Quite lovely, agreed Clarabelle, as long as he doesn't get in and leave cat hair on my seats. At that moment, Bertie rolled up alongside. Careful, Thomas, he called warily. Black cats aren't as innocent as you might think. My driver told me they caused bad luck. Rubbish, retorted Thomas. How could a cat of all things be unlucky? Just then, the guard banged one of the coach doors. This frightened Bernard, who scurried down the station ramp, crossed Thomas's line and dove into the bushes. Bertie chuckled. I think you'll be finding out for yourself quite soon. Pa! scoffed Thomas, and he puffed on his way. Thomas soon forgot about Bertie and was feeling cheerful as he began the return trip. All was well until he approached another station and realised he wasn't slowing down. As he steamed through, porters waved and alarmed passengers shouted, Wait! Come back! Thomas and the coaches were well beyond the platform when he finally drew to a halt. The fireman ran back quickly to check it was safe to reverse. Oh, my fault, I expect, groaned the driver, but I thought I was used to that stiff handbrake by now. Never mind, soothed Thomas. These things happen. After collecting the passengers, eventually, the rest of the journey went smoothly, and soon Thomas wasn't running that late at all. But as he came to a level crossing, he found the gates firmly shut and a lorry stuck in the middle. Sorry, called the lorry driver. The engine just conked out halfway across. I've called for help, so we should be out of your way soon. Thomas grew very impatient, waiting. Come on, come on, he muttered anxiously. How long has it been now? Only about twenty minutes, chuckled his driver. These things happen, remember. Look, they've just cleared the crossing. Let's see if we can make up some time. Thomas raced away the moment the gates opened. He did his best was very late indeed when he reached the junction. James was fuming. Huh, he grumbled. What was that you said about being a guaranteed connection? You're not much use if you're going to be as slow as Edward. That evening in the sheds, Thomas told Boker what a trying day it had been. Deary me, it sounds like you've had quite a time of it, sympathised Boko. Even so, I'm still not sure about what Bertie said, went on Thomas. Do you believe in luck, Boko? Nah, not really. Take those things that went wrong for all the diesels like me back on the mainland. That wasn't bad luck, just bad design. Yes, I'm sure tomorrow will be better, agreed Thomas. Now for a good night's sleep. He'd only just closed his eyes when it started raining heavily outside. And then he noticed a drip, drip, drip on his dome. Oh yes, smiled Boko. I meant to warn you about that leaky bit of roof. You'd best make sure your driver leaves you on the other line tomorrow. The drip kept poor Thomas awake most of the night. 
next morning, he set off with a train of china clay for the harbour, feeling exhausted. On arrival, he started to back his trucks into the loading platform, but because he was so tired, he wasn't being very careful. To make matters worse, the shunter had left the points unchanged, and by the time anyone realised, it was too late. Inside his van, Percy's guard was just about to have tea and biscuits for Elevenses. Feeling the sudden jolt, he quickly jumped to safety. But the brake van was now almost underwater. Well, Thomas, sighed the guard, I do like to dunk my biscuits, but this has taken things a little too far. Thomas was speechless, but it gave Percy a good laugh. Despite the mishap, Thomas tried to get on with his work as best he could, but somehow things just kept going wrong. Later that day, Thomas was on his way back to the harbour, running late again. As he came into the small station, he saw Bernard on the platform. After all I've been through, I think Bertie was right, decided Thomas. Black cats are unlucky. He tried hard not to look at Bernard, but couldn't miss the stern gaze of the fat controller who had just arrived. Thomas, I've had complaints about you these last few days. You are not to blame for the lorry breaking down, but you should know that even with Edward's absence, I am trying to run an efficient railway, and carelessness is not efficient. I'm sorry, sir, Thomas said sadly, but a black cat lives here, and the bad luck he brings has been following me everywhere. And he told him what Bertie had said. The fat controller laughed. Stuff and nonsense. That's just an old myth. While some do consider black cats bad luck, many more believe they are actually good luck. And I'm one of those people. Oh, excuse me. The man, who had been waiting for the train, introduced himself as a friend of the vicar. I have several cats at home. Believe me, Thomas, they are the luckiest creatures in the world. After all, how do you think they always land on their feet? I had wondered, admitted Thomas. And if Bernard somehow was the cause of your lateness today, then, in a way, it was actually lucky for me, grinned the man. Thomas was puzzled. How can being late be a good thing? I've been visiting my old friend this afternoon to discuss traction engines. He gave me a lift back here, and because your train was delayed, it meant I had time to drive Trevor around the station car park. That helped me finally decide to buy a traction engine of my very own. How splendid! Congratulations, smiled the fat controller. As he went to shake the man's hand, Bernard started purring around his legs. He was hoping there might be a treat in his pocket. Then Sir Topham looked down and found something on the platform. Pon my soul, a penny! Now, how does the rhyme go? Find a penny, pick it up, and all the day you'll have good luck. He then gave the penny to the driver. And, if you give your penny to a friend, your luck will never end. So... No more bad luck for me, beamed Thomas. Thank you, sir. Now, if you don't mind, I think I'd better go. We do have an efficient railway to run. The fat controller chuckled as he and the vicar's friend hurried aboard the train. And then Thomas puffed off, feeling much better. Well, the penny must have worked, because nothing else went wrong for the rest of his stay on Edward's branch line. And now, whenever Thomas does spot Bernard, he knows he doesn't mean to bring any bad luck. In fact, seeing Bernard makes him feel like a very lucky engine indeed.